who's watching. So who we got on tonight so far? Anybody watching? Give it a few minutes, see if anybody else pops on. We're making a camping wreath tonight. Hello. Hi, Marty. How are ya? How's your sister's wreath? Is it still in one piece? <laughs> Was your Easter? Was it good? We got three on. We are going to make a wreath using this campfire sign. Welcome to our campsite where friends and marshmallows get toasted at the same time. It's that time of year people are going to be getting their campers out and going camping. So, I made big marshmallows. <laughs> Actually, this was the third try. The first two I made were huge, and they didn't look right with the sign. Did the bird ruin it? Oh, no. Well, we got to have her come back. We got to straighten it out then. That's horrible. Aw. So, who we got watching tonight? Anybody? I see three, and Marty already said hi. Hi, Ellen. How are you? Welcome. How's the weather in Maryland? It's pretty nice here today. We're going to be making a camping wreath. I don't know if you saw the sign, Ellen. It says, Welcome to our campsite, where friends and marshmallows get toasted at the same time. I'll be putting this up on my Etsy site. I think I only got one left now. Anybody else? No? Is everybody having trouble getting on? Looks like it. Because now we're down to one again. Marty, did you get kicked off again? That's what happened last week. I'm just waiting to see if anybody else pops on so we can get started. We've got um, a green wreath. I wanted it to look like it was in the woods. So I already attached the sign. I'm making a little campfire down here. Can you see that? It's just four sticks, and I drilled a hole up the middle and put a pipe cleaner through it. Okay and then tie the pipe cleaner down and we're going to create a little uh little um fire on top of our um campground fire and then somehow we're going to attach the marshmallows on here and put some greenery around to make it look like it's in the woods i'm not sure if i'm going to do a bow i'm going to leave it up to everybody yes it was sunny and warm here too ellen it was beautiful It's going to kind of be a short evening, um, and I'll show you why at the end, because I only got probably less than an hour's sleep last night, so I'm a little bit funky, <laughs> I'm tired, <laughs> 
and I just thought I'm not really going to be into this, but we're going to do it anyhow so I can get it done. Okay, so I'll go ahead and pin you down. If anybody has any questions, let me know. All right, and again, we're using a green wreath because I liked all the pine in here, so it kind of makes it look like it's in the woods. Something dropped. Oh, I know what dropped. Our fire dropped. Oh, no. <laughs> I actually took four pieces of mesh and wrapped them together to make it look like flames. I cut it in the shape of like a rectangle. Okay. And those were kind of the colors that I see in, in a fire. So um, that's what I went with. So we're going to put our fire on the, um, the wood to make our campfire. Everybody have a great holiday. It was quiet here. All right. So I attached the four together with a pipe cleaner. Okay. So I have a pipe cleaner that I use to go down the middle of the uh, campfire, the wood on the campfire. So we're going to just attach it to that. Or we may have to go down underneath the first log. Hi, Nancy. Welcome. Well, evidently, I didn't leave enough pipe cleaner. So... I'm going to have to go with a longer pipe cleaner. That doesn't look longer. But maybe I can attach it underneath. And, I, and those that were watching last week, I did finish my, um, my uh, farmhouse wreath, the uh, chicken wreath. So I'll go ahead and share that at the end. I haven't had time to post a picture of it or post it on Etsy yet. And I'm not sure how this campfire is going to stay, but I may have to do further adjusting on it tomorrow to get it to um, look the way I want it to look. But there it is so far. It's not really the way I want it. I want it more bunched together, so I may have to run some wire through the middle and really attach it better than it's attached now. Because I don't want it to overpower the sign, I basically want it over here. And the only way I could get the logs to sit on top of each other was to drill that hole down the middle. It's not staying. Oh, it's been that kind of day. Hi, Sue. Welcome. How many are popping on just for the surprise at the end? <laughs> I'm probably going to have to reconfigure this thing because this is not going the way I wanted it to. So, maybe if I tie it down this way. Underneath. And then kind of flip these around a little. There. That, that's a little bit better. Then what I can do is I can attach this to the wreath base itself to sit above it. And I think that'll that'll get the effect that I want. Yeah, that's better. It looks better laying against the wreath. And I can pull it tighter down so then it kind of sticks up better. Doesn't that look better? 
I think that's the way we'll go. I knew it was going to be a little difficult, but I thought we'd be able to figure it out. Yeah, I like that better. That look better. There. Okay, now we can either put these angled down at the fire, or we can put them like this, or we can put them over here. But if we put them over here, I didn't know if it would interfere with the sign. Anybody have any uh, any ideas of where they think it would look good? We can do here like this and have it leaning down onto the fire. Can you see it like that? Think that looks good leaning down? Are you guys awake? <laughs> I know I'm not very awake, but are you awake? Hmm. Leaning down, I think that looks like it's sitting on top of the fire and I like it that way. This is just fleece. There are two fleece circles and one uh, wide band and I stitched it together and then stuffed it. And I used real sticks out of the yard. I just went ahead and, um, you know, took the sandpaper to it. I think I do. I think I like it just like that. But my problem is, is it going to go together or am I going to have to drill a hole through these? I actually used raffia to tie my sign to the wreath base because the raffia is the same color as the sign. I planned on putting some, either a bow on this side, Marty, or some um, greenery. I have some greenery that actually doesn't like disappear on in the wreath. It's a different variation color-wise. Um, I have some of this I can use, and I can also put an owl. Because that's something you would see camping. But maybe I'll try and use the raffia on this because it kind of matches the, um, the sticks that I used for the marshmallows. And I may be able to disguise it better. And again, I may have to go ahead and change it up some. But... We shall see. This is all trial and error tonight because I've had, like I said, probably an hour's sleep. And that's been it. <laughs> I really like them pointing down. I think that's the ticket. But this stick has a curve and a bend to it. There we go. And again, I may have to go ahead and change it change how I'm mounting it, but I wanted to go more natural so it wouldn't show like wire would. Does the campsite look okay? The fire? I wanted to go with the green because I thought it, it resembled uh, a campsite better than mesh wood. Now I'm going to have to fight to figure out where to put this. There's another angle there. And I will put the other sign on my Etsy store tomorrow if I have time. And if anybody wants marshmallows, I can make the marshmallows too. All right, I'm going to have to turn this over to get a good grip on it. 
this raffia, you can't cut it. It's so freaking strong. Like, you can't break it. It's so strong. It's just not long enough. Come on. Yeah, I thought about that, but you know, when I when I design stuff, Marty, I want it all to be like size-wise, you know, like I'd have a tiny camper on there and the marshmallows would be big and I'm a big one that when my my stuff has to be sized accordingly and the campers were kind of small. Okay, can I scream now? It's not going. <laughs> ah! I didn't have a long enough piece. We may have it. Yeah, I think I got it now. There we go. <gasps> How's that look? Do they look like real marshmallows roasting on the fire? I'm trying to get my thing there. I went ahead. I know, right, Tina? I know, I saw a lot of campers there. But I just thought I that wasn't the look I was going for. I mean, I kind of wanted to work off the theme that was on the sign. So that's why I went ahead and... And did this. I want it to look like we were out in the woods and we were roasting marshmallows. I would have loved some little beer mugs, but I couldn't find any. And I really didn't have time to look, so. Alright, so we got that part. Now, I have some of this that if we wanted to make a rustic bow, we could use some of this in the bow. I even have this, and this kind of looks like it's um, a wood grain on it. I thought maybe that and this in front of it. What's, what's everybody's idea on that? Because we got red in here. This will show up nice against the green. But if we go ahead and use the yellow, then I don't know if the yellow would look good with that. You see what I'm saying? Because these really looked nice against it. Like I don't have to use the whole bush. I can put pieces of it in there. Um, I even have little pine cones. No, I don't. <laughs> Believe it or not, ribbon with a camper on it is the only one I don't have. I have lots of flowers, lots of stripes, lots of polka dots, um, sunflowers. I have this one that has sunflowers on it. And because these are yellow and kind of goes with the sign, we could kind of put some red in there, pop a red. But I don't know if that looks good with that. See what I'm saying? Or we could just do a bow and make it rustic just with these three colors. Or just because that might look like Christmas, we could do this. Just these two. Just a simple bow down below here. Or we could add those two and this just to make it look simple down below. I have 
this kind of looks like marshmallows, but it's the cotton. So I don't know if that will work too. But those are some options. Let's work on putting some of this in here. We can even put some of this behind it. Um, I have this too. If we wanted to use some of this, I have some little white flowers. So we could kind of build with those on this side and stick the owl up here. And that quick, there he is. We want him up in here and then put some pine cones up in here or scatter some pine cones throughout. Sue, I think these are the pine cones you got me this year. But we put some pine cones up there. Put some greenery down in here. And stick our owl in here somewhere. Where did that come from? We even have a, another pine cone. I'm going to turn on my glue pot. So when I need it, it's ready. Um, I don't know, you think he's too much for that? Just burlap. I have uh, just burlap. And we could add that over top of it. That's a good idea, Tina. Thank you. Yeah, I think we'll we'll kind of put him in here so it looks like he's up in the tree. And I don't know, do we need to add any of the yellow or stay away from the yellow? Because it kind of takes away from him, doesn't it? could sprinkle some of these throughout up here because again they're not they have a different green color to them than the wreath itself I like that kind of put some of this maybe on this side to balance it Pine cone there and maybe one there. How's that looking? And then I think we'll just go with this and this. It's just enough because we don't want it too much. Those little white flowers. Let me snip off a they're nice, but he's like up in a tree. I don't know if I want to add a bunch of flowers up in the trees. I'm thinking I don't have anything that's kind of um, like I have a lot of greenery, but I don't have a lot with brown in it. This thing, no, maybe the twigs, no, um, have some of this, what about this instead of the white flowers? Yeah, but this is going to be like at night. 
and you'll see why I say that at the end. So I don't know if I want the flowers showing. Like, do you think any of this in there? I think I actually had a piece over here. Yeah, I did. What do you think of that? So I'm trying to make it look really woodsy. You know what I mean? Hi, Jonathan. Welcome. I thought you'd be going live tonight. We usually are against each other. <laughs> How are we looking so far? Yikes. I got to attach our owl. We're using this sign, Jonathan. I made some homemade marshmallows. I'm trying to, can you see them? And then we made a little campfire with some sticks, drilled a hole through the middle and used a pipe cleaner and some mesh. Now we're just trying to figure out how we're going to put the foliage in here before we go ahead and make our rustic bow. Maybe I need to balance it out. No. I don't even know if I like that one there. It's almost like if I put this one here, then I have to put some more around. But maybe that's too much. Maybe just little pieces of it. But when you're doing these lives, you feel like you're talking to yourself. <laughs> now that, that, I think, is better. Just little touches. Thank you, Jonathan. Then I have like the three colors in there. Give it some depth. These marshmallow sticks are causing an issue. There. And then I can put that one on top. And maybe one more there. Does that look better? Hi, Summer. Hi, Bobby. What do you think? That right there. And then our owl right there. And then we scatter the pine cones throughout. How's that look so far? What, these, or are you talking the little white flowers, Tina? Like just a few sprigs here and there? Like that? I'll get the pine cones up here so they're more visible.
just like that. It says, welcome to our campsite where friends and marshmallows get toasted at the same time. I have one more left, and it's going on Etsy tomorrow. So then what do you think? Work on the bow and put the bow right here. And then I'll show you why I was trying to... Um, this is actually a lighted wreath. And I thought, wouldn't that look cute at someone's campsite at night? Got to move my cord here. It's about ready to get toasted on my thing. Isn't that adorable? I know, right? Because look, it makes the, uh, the fire look like it's actually lit. Right? And see, I needed just some greenery and stuff in here with a little bit of uh, pine cones just to give it that woodsy effect. I know. I, I just, I had the sign and I knew I was going to be doing the marshmallows. And I thought, I, I was starting to pick out mesh, and I'm like, no, no, we want, we want it to look pine, you know, like pine. And then I realized it had lights on it. <laughs> and I'm like, that's perfect. It'll make it look like the fire's actually on. So, yeah. Funny things happen in this house when, when you're, uh, when you've lost sleep. <laughs> I can even, uh, I don't know if we want to do this, but we could even throw some of that tubing in that's kind of rustic. But I'm thinking just a simple bow right here. Now we have the burlap. So, and we have the red. Do we want to add a third? Like, um, I have, I have white daisies on burlap oops I have big wide ribbon that has red daisies um, da, da, da. I mean, it's kind of like, I don't know that I want to go daisy. I think I just want to, like, I actually have a wider burlap. I have two kinds of burlap. And then there's this. I think this would look better against this, because this has more of a, like a, a look to it that's kind of see like I don't know if that's going to look right against that like this is why this is thinner than this so that's why I'm thinking if I go with the wider and use the wider yes see great minds think alike I just wish they would make these things to hold so you don't end up with this coming off all the time. I hate that. Okay. Put this away. Or what really would have been nice too would have been like um, fireflies to have some kind of uh, ribbon with fireflies on it. That, I think, would go really neat. Because that's one thing I remember when we were going camping, going after the fireflies at night. That was always cool. All right, so let's just make a simple bow with our Easy Bow Maker. 
I'm going to do the funky style with the three, loop, three loops and the two tails. Okay. You guys still haven't answered me. Who's on for the surprise at the end? <laughs> There's a few people I could say that are on for the surprise at the end. Why is this getting tangled? There we go. I'm just trying to figure out which was the right side and which was the wrong side. Now I did list all the links at the top of the, of the uh, comments. Link to uh, my bot to let you know when I go live. The link to my Etsy store, my Facebook page. I forget the other one. But please don't forget to like and share or sign up to be notified. Okay, there's that. I don't have... I do have a simple yellow, like a simple yellow with black that's wide. If we wanted to pull some of the yellow out of that and the black that's in the sign. I also have this, I don't know if you can see it. <laughs> I figured you were on for that, Bobby. I also have this too, so these are options. Which one, Tina? I could put this one next. I think the yellow, and then add this one. And I don't know, the orange would be a nice pop, too. The last two, which was these. Or these. My right or my left. Okay, do we go with the red and black, yellow and black, tan with white polka dots, or the orange with daisies? The burlap with the dots. Got a vote. See, now I need a thousand followers on YouTube so I can do this on YouTube. And I have to get a different camera because this small phone is not cutting it anymore. I know. Well, Tina, you, you, were you on last week? Let me show you something. I'm not trying to make anybody dizzy. But my husband just went ahead and I told him what I wanted for shelving and he just designed those shelves for me. And guess what? They're already full and I need two more. Sorry, I'm moving it around a bunch, aren't I? I'm just trying to show you the scope of it. Yeah, I showed those at the end of it last week because I've been telling everybody that, okay. The burlap dots and the open weave. That would look nice. I know, I keep telling you, Tina, you have to stop by. So we're saying no to the yellow with the Swiss dots then, right? I'm telling you, you would have a blast here. We have a blast during um, 
during classes. Just ask Marty. How many have you been to, Marty? She's been to almost every one. She's my favorite customer and friend. She was a friend before she was a customer. All right. So we're saying now the red. We'll do the red next, and then we'll add the burlap with the ribbon. I, I think you're right. It's not rustic enough. But I think these will be. Yep, this is going to be fun getting in between here. For those just joining us, a lot of my puppy parents are on tonight because my one, one uh, dog, my Yorkie, Casey, started in labor yesterday at 4 in the afternoon. I stayed up with her all night long. Thought I was going to have to take her to the vet this morning. And at six something this morning she decided she was going to start popping them out one right after the other so the five surprises are i was going to take you upstairs and show you the puppies and the mom and <laughs> I, it was funny the one she had uh, three girls and two boys, and the one little boy, I was working on the girl, and I looked down at Mama to make sure that she was okay and the puppies were okay, and there was another boy laying there. He just popped right out. So, it was hilarious, because that... Um, Raffia that I was using to tie those marshmallows on reminded me of the darn you have to use dental floss to tie off the umbilical cords after you cut them and I I was having a heck of a time with that little dental floss trying to tie it. Oh my god Bonnie, I think that was an awesome idea about the dots because the dots are actually going to pull from the uh, marshmallows. So I love that idea. Thank you. See, with my lack of sleep, because I went and took a small nap, so I only had about an hour sleep, I'm not functioning. <laughs> I'm barely functioning. So will that cover it? No. I think I'll use a black um, zip tie. I think that would cover it better. Let's see. No. Um, I had a brown one here somewhere. Or I could just go back to the stinking raffia. If I can find a piece long enough. I used it in the farmhouse wreath we did last week, so maybe I could use it again. It's so it's so strong you can't break it. That would even look cool just sticking out from it, wouldn't it? All right, I'll take this off here. I'm just gonna stick with these colors. Like I said, this is this is so haphazard here because I'm just not working on all cylinders. And I don't drink coffee, so I'm running on fumes. Well, I don't think I'll be able to tie this down, will I? Yeah, I will. It'll stay. I'm waiting for everybody to say, get done, get done, so we can go see the puppies. And then I have another litter due May 15th. So let's hope that's not on a Monday. 
actually Casey was due the 25th and I really thought she was going to have them on Easter the way she was going yesterday. Oh, I love these three colors together. I think right, either right there or right down there. Let me move this. And I'm not going to go ahead and, you know, make you wait for me to glue all that together. Let's see if we can plug this in again. What do you think? There? Or down here? I think it kind of looks good there. It kind of balances, doesn't it? And then maybe add just a few more pine cones down here. What do you think? I'm sorry, now I'm attached to a cord and I can't move it any closer than that. How's that look? I love those colors. Try the upper left, like up here, you mean? And then bring this down further, like put it here and bring this down to here. Is that what you were thinking, Bonnie? No? Oop. Piece of dovetail. So how's that? I'm sorry, Bonnie. Are you saying yes to up here and then move this down? I mean, it'll look better when it's hanging. But right now, it's looking kind of because then it kind of drapes down. The tails are long. Hi, Dawn. We're just about done. <laughs> yeah, I think down here, and we'll let that hang down. I handmade marshmallows on a stick, Dawn. And then we got some pine guns in here, some foliage. We did it on a... Um, I'm not going to call it a Christmas wreath. I'm going to call it a green wreath that has lights. We just made a bow. We have a little campfire going on down here. So the lights illuminate the, the fire. We got our three marshmallows leaning down over top of the fire. So I have to go back in and attach some of this stuff. I mean right down here, Marty? Right here? Yeah. I can do that. We can do that. Let me see. Do I have any of that? I have some of this. See, that doesn't look as light in color as the other ones did. How's that? And I'll put some more of this down there. First, I'm going to move these bows. They're in my way. And it's not working for me. We're losing our pine cones all over, so I'm going to have to glue them back. Let's see. Where are my cutters? Hang in there, Bobby's husband. We're almost done. I promise. Like right there. Well, and I used raffia to tie the sign down. Because it's really strong. How's that? I think that looks perfect. Another one of a kind. We'll put a few of these pine cones down here. 
to really um, make it look woodsy. We got our campfire here, the wood for our campfire. We drilled a hole down the middle, put a pipe cleaner through it so we could stack them on top of each other. And it's got lights. Woo! Yeah, it does. Can you tell how freaking punchy I am by now? <laughs> and I'll show you last week's wreath because I did a few changes to it. But it's done. I just have to glue everything. There's last week's. See, I added these, the little white and green. Can everybody see that okay? I think it needed just that little touch. That was done on a grapevine wreath. And see, we made little nests out of the raffia. All right. promised you all. Now what I'll do, I'll unplug all, everything here. Now, there we go. I left my glue pot on the other week. All right, so that's, that's good. We're good. Everybody like it? I'll finish it up tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. All right, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my phone off the base, but I'm not going to be holding it. I don't want I don't want uh, Marty to get dizzy. So I'll stick something in front of it. So I'll walk up the steps to the uh, whelping box, okay? And that way you guys won't be getting dizzy, all right? Because that, that happens. All right. I'm trying to find something to cover it with. I mean, I just don't want anybody to get dizzy. I'll just use my hand so I can walk up the steps. Oh, Tina, that's that's my classroom. A little messy right now, but that's my classroom. All right, we're going up the steps. Try not to make anybody dizzy. Okay. Now what I'll do is I'll turn off the red light so you'll be able to see better. Hi, Mama. Everybody came to see your babies. All right. I'm trying to get over without breaking a leg here. I'll turn off this light. I'll turn off that. I'll turn on that one. And then come on out, Mama. All right. This was, can you guys see okay? There's Miss Peaches. Peaches was breeches. <laughs> she was breech. So that's her. Then next came, don't jump on the babies. Next came Miss Yellow. Where's Miss Yellow? Back up, Mommy. It's okay. All right, all right, all right, all right. Here's Miss Yellow. See, they got their voice already. Then came uh, Mr. Gray. Little Mr. Gray. There he is. Isn't he a cutie? And then came Miss Pink. Here's Miss Pink. They're all nice and warm. Mom's been doing a great job. And then came Mr. Tan. Come here, buddy. Mom, I'm not taking him away. There he is. So what do you think? It's okay. It's okay. There you go. It's okay. All right. So there you see what I did last night. <laughs> well, last night into this morning. She started popping them at like 632. And I'll show you. Well, come here, Miss, Miss Peaches. 
I don't know if you can see how little that umbilical cord is. That's where I had to tie that piece of dental floss around that little area right there. And they're wiggling and doing this and crying and carrying on. It's okay. Now see, they have a little weight on their chest and under their chin. Mama is a party carrier. I have grandma out there. Um, she's white, black, and tan. So there's different colors to Yorkies. Um, I also have a whole litter of chocolates that are due, um, like I said, the 15th. So but that's what I was up to. And let's see, sorry if I'm spinning. There you go. Can you see that okay? That's when they were born. And like I said, I was working on Miss Pink and all of a sudden I looked down and there's Mr. Tan. So I don't know where he came from. I mean, I know where he came from, but I don't know how he got there that quick. So does anybody have any questions? Sue has Bunner and Bunner is from Casey and, and Blaze, isn't, isn't he? I think he is. Yep, they're eggs. I am so loaded with eggs, you have no idea. I don't wash them until I put them in the refrigerator. And right now I have five dozen in the refrigerator, so there's not a whole lot of space for them. But if you need eggs, I got eggs. Yeah, I thought, I thought Bunner was from Casey and um, Blaze. And Blaze is the daddy to the, the next litter. It's it, the white on the chest, um, Bobby means party carrier. Mama is a party carrier. I'm trying to get out of the glare so that's not in my face. Um, Grandmom is a party, and I have Grandmom, and the mother to this letter, Casey, is from Grandmom, so is from that mother. So she's a party carrier. If Blaze carried party, then they would there would be some parties in there but he doesn't carry the party gene he only carries the chocolate gene so for anybody interested in like um breeding if they were looking for the chocolate gene i'm sure these these pups would carry it hi janice no problem we we made our wreath already um we came up so everybody could see Oh, I would love for you to take the eggs. We came up, I came up to show everybody the, the pups that were born this morning. She started at 6.32 and I was up all night with her. I brought a recliner in here um, and then she finished off at 7.53. So, and this is her last litter. She's six, so she won't be having any more litters which is so sad because she's such a good mommy. I know. <laughs> there was one, I think it was little Mr. Gray. He was doing a lot of squeaking today, and I, I was watching him. That's why I weighed them. The smallest one is Mr. Gray, and he's 3.9 ounces. And then the little girl, Miss Pink, she's 4.3. And Mr. Miss Pink and Mr. Tan, the last two, were both born without their sack. So that's why it's looking a little dirty in there. I've changed the bedding like three times already. Um, anytime they're born without the sack and it doesn't come out, you have to give mom like oxytocin, which what it does is it flushes the uterus and anything that was left in there from those puppies comes out. Well, it comes out like like blackish green it's just disgusting but um that's the nature of it <laughs> so i just keep cleaning up um i started her on a slight a small dose of an antibiotic too because i don't want infection brewing after that was stuck in there she didn't have any trouble passing them what shocked me was um 
her water sack never showed. So, um, I don't know why. <laughs> I have no idea. Unless she was just leaking it slowly all night long and I just didn't know it. But, um, usually that's what I wait for. So, but she's, she takes really good care of them, as you can see. And that, that um, whelping box was made by me. I used, um, this is that PVC pipe uh, garage trim. And then I built a base and then a top to it. And then I put a piece of wire up here because I have a camera on site. And I also use a reptile um, light to heat from above. And then underneath that is a, is a heating pad that's on constant. If you do not keep the puppy's temp up to 99.9, .9, um, they can't digest their food. And if they don't digest their food, then they don't grow. Um, so that's why I weigh them twice a day. I weigh them in the morning, I weigh them at night to make sure there's a steady gain. If there's not, then I have to tube feed. So, oh, thank you, Janice. They're, they're Yorkies. Um, I've been breeding Yorkies since 2007, um, down to just two breeding females and uh, one, one male. I have three other dogs um, that are retired. So, and I have a room and a store off my dining room. I have a small in-home store with all natural dog and cat products. Um, and then I have a room off of that because when I started um, breeding, everybody was complaining they had nowhere to take them. So I ended up creating the room so that um, now any of my puppy parents, they can board their dogs here, I can groom their dogs here, and the food is here. So it's kind of like a one-stop shop. So you'll be seeing more pictures of the babies as they grow. Um, usually at between day three and day five, I dock their tails and, uh, remove the dew claws. And then week two, their, their eyes open. And then week three, their ears open. That's always funny when their ears open because I'll round the corner and they'll hear me for the first time and they'll bark at me. And that's hilarious to hear their little bark. So, and that's Casey. I'll shine it back because I know everybody's waiting to see. And look how red their paws are and their little nose. So you know they're warm um, when they're like that. And right now, somebody's probably under mom in the front and can't get to the milk. And so she's taking care of them. But there's Mr. Gray and Miss Yellow. It amazes me when they come out just how strong their hind quarters are. I mean, they just move. And usually they just make a beeline right for mom. And it's like, how do they know that? You know? I don't know, maybe somebody's stuck behind her. I put these, they call them pig rails in here. Yeah. Okay, just bringing around to the front, not taking them away. Just bringing them around to where the milk is. That's all. Okay. There we go. And see, you can see how fat those little bellies are. So they're eating pretty good. They should, because let me tell you, she is loaded with calcium. Um, the thing is now they tell you to give them the calcium before the first puppy hits the ground before they were telling you to give them right after the first one was born, it helps with her contractions and it makes a, for a smoother delivery. There's a better picture of her laying down with all of them. And then I'll remove that rail as soon as they turn two weeks because what they'll start doing is, these are washable piddle pads, so what they'll start doing is they'll start coming out and they will learn to start piddling outside of their area and piddle outside onto the piddle pads. 
So they're usually piddle pad trained by the time they leave here for sure. And if weather permits, then I start um, training them outside too. And they spend one week before they leave. Um, I make a custom bed for them with their name on it. And they spend one week learning to sleep by themselves. Um, I, it's so funny, I show a picture of it where I section them all off and there's, they're just like right down the line, one next to each other. So she's actually doing exceptional. I'm surprised for as long as she was in labor. Um, I started to, like I said, get worried around three o'clock this morning, like, oh no. Um, but cause I think what happened, I was giving her a supplement and I think it was just a little too rich for her and it made her throw up. And so the calcium I was giving her, she was throwing that up. So, and plus she's, you know, she's a half a year older than the last time she had a litter. So a lot of times, you know, that, that causes issues too, but she did awesome. So I'm just glad it's over. But now I got one more to do in two weeks or two and a half weeks. Oh, I, I wondered it. I wonder is Sue does, uh, does Bunner or, um, Precious hear the puppies? Cause Bobby's two girls are, are wondering where the noise is coming from. And you'd be surprised. It doesn't matter how far they move away. They still remember. Yeah, I figured Precious would be. Because Precious, um, she was one that I kind of rescued from. Well, she was, the breeder, I guess, just wasn't um, interested in her anymore. And we wanted to get her out of there because it wasn't a very clean environment. And so I brought her up here. And I did breed her, and she had an issue, um, or one pup, we couldn't get it out, so we ended up having to spay her, and Sue went ahead and adopted her, so I, I figured she would be going nuts. They know what that sound is. I ended up, the um, dog room is right across from the store, and I ended up having to shut that door this morning because they could hear everything that was going on, so... They were going nuts out there. In fact, they all didn't eat very well either. <laughs> the girls were going crazy. So. Well, I guess that's it. So, um, like I said, keep watching. You'll see more videos as they grow. Okay. And I appreciate all your help with the wreath. I hope I'm not making you dizzy here. Going back down. But I'll be posting videos probably every other day because I know there are so many people that want them. Um, I think there's five on the list for this letter and two on the list for the chocolates, which are next. They'll be due the 15th. So, All right. Well, I appreciate, again, all your help. And if anybody has any questions... Um, Oh, you're welcome, Bonnie. Or Bobby, sorry. <sighs> my mouth is not, not functioning with my brain, for sure. But, okay. Yeah, I'm going to try. And I have two more boarders coming in tomorrow because there was a death in the family and they have to go away for the day. So, I'll have four boarders, my six, and a litter of five. So, I need to get some rest tonight, <laughs> for sure. This is going to be a long day. It's going to start really early tomorrow. So, All right, everybody have a good evening, and thanks for joining me. And we'll see you next Monday night. Or maybe I'll pop in during the week. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Good night, everyone. Thank you.